Hi, I'm Luke Seerveld. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Uh, you know, someone asked if I could talk about uh, what you wear on your belt. Okay, I'm really not the best person to do that because uh, I don't work on, you know, uh, bigger shows anymore. Um, well, very often. And so um, I don't carry a lot of stuff on my belt anymore. Um, you know, I have everything in uh, a milk crate uh, that I used to wear on my belt, and that's on a cart that comes off the truck pretty much every time. And so it's readily available on set, and it's usually just, you know, me and maybe uh, one or two other guys. So um, it's it's a much smaller deal. I don't have to go long distances um, and have everything strapped to me. So, uh, but I can talk about what I used to have. And so uh, I would have another belt besides a belt that's holding up my pants. And, um, and then on this, I would slide some of these kind of bags. And just to sh let you know how long ago this was, these are Lindcraft bags. So he sold out to uh, uh, another um, uh, company. And, uh, but these were great for, for years. Um, and uh, because I would swing uh, grip and electric, I would often carry more stuff than I needed to. So if you're uh, electric, you know, usually you have like a, a, an amp probe. Um, so you can, uh, you know, check your, uh, your amperage. Uh, that also has, um, you know, two leads so you can check your voltage. Um, this, you know, would do banded and like two watt, four watt, you need a little larger uh, clamp. So I have that too, but I keep that in the bag. And this doesn't do uh, DC voltage, so you need another little sort of multimeter for that, uh, for batteries and such. So, um, but the uh, amp probe, you got to have that uh, just so uh, you're safe uh, in terms of power. So that was that. Um, and I used to have an analog one. This one, uh, you know, if you use it a lot, then you're going to want to keep a, a 9 volt battery around. There's probably newer ones out now, but this is been uh, good for me for for years and uh and then you know as an electrician you probably have like a set of dikes on you uh you know this kind of thing just in case you gotta um uh you know quickly get through uh heavy cable for whatever reason um or you're um, you know sort of a poor man's um uh, way to um, take off the sheathing on uh, uh, electric cable if you're making up stingers or you're making up some other kind of um, uh, you know quick adapter on the set and you know uh, I was thinking about this the other day it's like um, you know you have these uh, three to two adapters which are great but uh, you know the, the newer ones have have a fat side that's the uh, the neutral and so sometimes you have to take your dikes and like make these skinnier so that they could go into, uh, you know, old style uh, two prong um, uh, uh, outlets, you know, because this guy's not going to go in because they've got the. So yeah, it's a it's a three to two, which is nice, but it it has the uh, the larger side on on uh, one of the conductors, so you're you're still having to adapt, you know, to make that work. Anyway, so that's sort of on the electric side, and I guess, you know, um, a quick uh, stinger uh, check just to make sure you've got the, um, you know, um, the right setup. Uh, you don't have um, switched uh, neutral and, and uh, hot, uh, that you have a ground, you know, that's important. Um, it's always nice to have a ground. But, um, and then speaking of which, you know, just a little quick on-off switch. Um, this is more, you know, in the tungsten days, uh, and... You know, you take off the, the little barrier here so that you can get a, a, a three prong into this uh, two prong. Um, and uh, let's see what I else have electrically. Oh, cube taps, of course. Um, nowadays, I just leave them on the end of my stinger, so there's always a cube tap around. Uh, then, if um, you know, more uh, grip wise, uh, you know, a blade. Uh, Speed rail wrench, you know, quick wrench for that. Uh, small channel locks. Uh, then, you know, they have the bigger version of these in, in another bag, uh, like, you know, a small uh, crescent wrench uh, and uh, regular size scissors. 
I actually have a larger crescent in here as well. And then, you know, for, um, uh, for, for uh, grid clamps or whatever, you know, nice to have uh, uh, another um, a quick version of this uh, versus the, the crescent wrench, which, um, you know, it's a little slower. Anyway, those are nice to haves. Uh, good to have an Allen set. This is a SAE, you know, standard. Uh, so in your bag, good to have uh, uh, a metric version as well. So uh, grip side, well, this is electric too. Uh, you know, just having a four in one uh, uh, screwdriver, very handy. Um, they're not all created equal. Uh, this one is okay, but I always look, try to look for the largest, the one that has the largest uh, flathead in the set. Uh, Cause it's nice to have a large flathead, nice to have a large um, Phillips. And then of course you have the, the smaller side on the other end. Uh, but um, that's a, a must. And then, you know, I sort of have a, a backup uh, T handle as well for the 316 you know, that you have on your speed rail wrench. Uh, set of um, gloves, you know, these days, I guess I wear my gloves less and less too because lights just aren't as hot, you know, LEDs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, they get hot on the back of them, but you can handle them just fine after hours of being on. Uh, grip side, you know, you might have a hammer, uh, might have a screw gun even, um, and of course a uh, measuring tape. So that's kind of it these days. You know, I guess if you're a gaffer, uh, uh, you're going to be wearing, um, you know, uh, one or two meters and... Um, Three meters, you know, if you have a, a, a spot and an incident in one, great, then maybe a color meter in the other. Um, but again, I just keep those in a case and bring those on uh, when I need them. Because often these days, you know, you're using the meter that's in the camera or on the monitor. Uh, less and less, uh, I'm using the, uh, the meters. So uh, these days, um, maybe I'll have a set of gloves, maybe not. Uh, I'll have, um, you know, a Sharpie and a regular pen in the pocket. And then uh, I'll have just a, you know, a $5 Husky blade. You know, it's got the removable um, blades, which is uh, slick. And, um, you know, I give these out for uh, Christmas presents, you know. They're, I just like it. It's small, but it still has the regular size blade. It's great. And then, um, you know, a Leatherman. I used to have the Wave, that was the best, but then they changed the style of it. And after I gave one to, you know, someone at the airport, uh, because I wasn't allowed to take it through, I ended up getting the Blast. And so um, what I mostly use on this is the needle nose, you know, to pull hot wire out or just, um, uh, yeah, I think that's mostly it. Hot wire. <laughs> but that I use less and less too. Uh, and the screwdriver. I end up using the screwdriver a fair amount. So both of them. Uh, Phillips and Flathead. So that's that. Always good to have a, a multi-tool on you. Just remember to put it in your luggage before you go to the airport. All right. So that gives you an overview of what you can wear on your belt. Um, some guys will have um, a smaller bag than this with just, you know, the best of uh, and have that on the side. Um, some guys will have a little uh, pouch to put a, a, a water bottle. And, of course, you need a place to put your uh, walkie if you're on a bigger set. And uh, good to have your own uh, earpiece just so you know where it's been. And, uh, yeah, you know, maybe uh, send in a photo of, uh, of your perfect uh, setup, and we can uh, learn from each other. That'd be fun. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.